Assalamu alaikum. We're here in Potichar. That's about seven kilometers roughly from Srebrenica. This is where the greatest genocide. 1995. The greatest genocide happened after World War II. We're going to look at the memorial that's been set up look at some history and bring to light some of what's been forgotten. And so be with us. Let's go ahead and continue our journey here in Bosnia. All these are the, the names of the... Yes, the, yes, all the names. All the names of people who died here? Yes. From the genocide? Yes. How many total? Koko uh, ukupno? Dio pravi objekat tamo unutra u kompleks fabrike memorijalnog centra. Znači u kompleks, znači nađene dvije žene, dva čovjeka i curca Fatima od mjesec dana. Stara. Starost mjesec dana. Šta je bilo? Kada je padala, kada kada su padale linije gore po šumama. Narod i Srebrenica je bježao ovdje, ovdje je bilo jedine nače, tu su bile jedine nače, bilo je njihova baza, bježala u bazu da se sačuva da i četnici ova, i srska vojska, da je ne ufati. I kad su došli tu, on se nadal da će ih ovi zaštititi. Međutim, ovi su ih prepustili četnicima. Dali su znači, žene, ova, žene i malu djecu da idu s autobusima prema kladnju, a muškarce su odvajali i kasnije su ubijali. Oni koji nisu htjeli da dođu ovdje, oni su preko šume bježali ka sobnoj teritori, tamo prema Nezuku, to otprilike stotinu kilometara preko šuma. Da je ukopano 6.342, znači dva pogljela borca, znači žena i djeci i tako dalje. A ukupno je 8.372, vodi se kao ljudi koji su pogljeli ovaj, za vrijeme, za vrijeme 11. Ovaj, septem, 11. U jula. Znači skoro 2.000 ljudi još nije nađeno po masovnih grobnicama. Inače, odalo u mjesto je puno masovnih grobnica. Oni su ubijali ljude i onda si vozili, kopali rupe masovne grobnice i tu su ih... I onda kad se neko otkrio, onda bi opet prebacivali u, znači, iz primarne u sekundarnu. Tako da se desilo da jednog čovjeka nađu, na jednom mjestu nađu ruku, na drugom nađu nogu. Znači, desavšavalo se da jednog čovjeka kompletnog nađu u sedam grobnica. Znači, negdje ruku, negdje nogu, negdje lakat i tako, glavu i tako. We are now at the museum in the Srebrenica Memorial, Memorial Center. Exactly Potočar is the name of this area. This is between Srebrenica and Bratunac. This was place where uh, it was basically the United Nations safe zone until it became not so safe for these victims. Uh, may Allah give them Jannah. Uh, these people basically, oh, this is not people from Srebrenica, which was, which is misconception with most people. This is area which was safe zone and all the Muslims from all the places around were running here because uh, the Serbian uh, aggressors were coming and burning their villages, killing everybody. So they were all running away and this was United Nations safe zone, supposed to be safe. But then we know the unfortunate events that happened in the world later that most of these people who, became, who came here were separated men from women and then women had their own destiny after and men, most of the males were killed here. Some of them, we see the graves there, some of them, they are staying approximately around 2,000 or we don't know how many still missing. So, and this is now we're about to enter the museum. We're looking at some of the footages from those horrible days and we have some of the descriptions. Here it says that uh, like the goal of these mothers who were separated, which we see in the picture here, it says to protect the young uh, offspring and to find out the first news about the male, males from, from their families females and kids and very old people who were let go to the safe, to the uh, territory which was under control of the uh, Bosnian army. This is a former battery factory uh, 
it used to be uh, before the war, during the war, it was based of uh, United Nations forces, Dutch peacekeepers. Uh, they were uh, located here. Uh, this building, building where we are now, uh, Dutch uh, soldiers used as a parking space uh, for their vehicles. When Srebrenica fell under control army of Republika Srpska, 11th of July 1995, uh, when refugees arrived here in Potocari, Dutch soldiers decided to move out vehicles and here in this uh, big hall uh, located five to six thousand refugees who spent two days and two nights when Bosnian Serb forces deported women and children who stayed outside when they uh, separate men and boys then Dutch soldiers told this group that they had to go on checkpoint and on that checkpoint Bosnian self forces separate men and boys who were here in the base same like people who stayed outside and that is reason why today we use this hall as, as memorial room. Uh, there in the cemetery you saw the number of victims of genocide in Srebrenica 8372 uh, victims who, are, uh, who were killed during the genocide in Srebrenica. There in the cemetery we have a memorial wall with uh, all the names of victims of genocide in Srebrenica and until today here in the cemetery uh, here in Potocari we have buried just 6,643 victims of genocide in Srebrenica. Uh, more than one and a half thousand people are still missing. They are not buried here in the cemetery. You know Every year on anniversary day here in Potocari we have new annual commemoration and new burial day for new identified victims of genocide in Srebrenica and this year we buried just 33 victims of genocide. It's a feeling that I just can't, you just got to imagine you have civilians, innocent men, women, children who are running for their lives, who are thinking they've come under UN protection. So imagine that. The Dutch battalion were there to protect the people who lived there. They didn't. They should have done. You're coming into a, this is this factory here, as you can see. They're coming into this safe zone. It's supposed to be a safe zone. You are now under the protection of the UN forces. But it ended up not being so safe. So, United Nations, you have the, the Dutch Holland troops, they are supposed to be protecting, putting their lives on the line. Uh, it, it reminds me, you know, if, if it was the other way around, you know, when, when, when someone is God conscious, when someone knows that there's a higher being above them watching, it reminds me of the verse, the ayah in the Quran, where the Almighty, God Almighty is saying, saving one innocent life is as if you saved all of mankind. So imagine if those people see when you're godless, when you don't have the consciousness of your creator, imagine if they had this consciousness and they knew and they were aware of the immense reward of saving an innocent life, they would have been able to put their lives on the line to save, to prevent the greatest genocide after World War II. But that's what happens when you separate and you throw out morality, the ultimate morality and God out of your life. So that's just what comes to my mind. So you have the safe zone ended up not being so safe. You have, imagine this area now, all of these innocent human beings coming running for their lives and then what happens next they start separating the men's men the the young 
boys and the men and then the, the women. We hear women are being raped. Can you imagine that? A horrific scene. And we often hear, never forget. So we're bringing this to light for many who have no idea of what happened here so we can truly never forget to prevent something like this from ever happening again. Only prison. This guy, he admitted that he killed 100 people and he got five years of prison. <laughs> so. so we got a chance to see like this abandoned factory and just envisioning the scene. You get to see the war criminals who were convicted and you get to see people who were killing one, an instance, a man killed a hundred people, can you imagine? And he got five years? Yes. So then how we came to know most of these facts is people were coming up, they're conscious. Many were now just coming up, coming forward and they were giving up the others and saying that they were forced to do these things because of their higher ups. Now we come over here and we see some of the things, some of the artifacts of what some of the, from Holland, the soldiers, the UN peacekeepers who are supposed to be protecting the innocent human beings who sought refuge here. You can see here what they found on the walls. One writes, I'm your best friend. I kill you for nothing. This is in 94. Another one here. It's interesting. You, find, you have a cross here. You have a cross here and he says, killing, killing is my business and business is good. The free man. The free man, the free man. Srpska pravoslavna crkva je direktno učesnik, znači direktni učesnik u, 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 onaj, u genocidu. Znači to je dokazano u, u, pred međunarodnim sudovima, dokazano je da uh, imate video klip Škorpioni gdje, uh, gdje ih pravoslavni pop uh, osvještava i kad on kad oni idu iz, iz, iz sa prostora Srbije za, na prostore Bosne i Hercegovine i on njih osvještava on, 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 nekom njihovom vodicom i on, on ovaj, njih šalje da oni prave genocid na prostorima Bosne i Hercegovine da ubijaju bošnjake i tako dalje. Znači to su, to su te stvari koje su činjenice, znači dokazi koji su neoborivi. S druge strane, nema ni jedan dokaz da bošnjaci su radili ne, takvo zlo drugim narodima, da, da, da su bili organizovani, da, da je to organizovano djelovalo, da, da je neki efendija ili neki imam došao pa uradio tako nešto ili je poslao određenu grupu, skupinu ljudi, bošnjaka, muslimana da to rade. Ne. To nije dokazano. Znači, međunarodni sudovi pravdi su dokazali da je ta pravoslavna, srpska pravoslavna crkva. It's interesting that the, 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 these, uh, what they call the extreme Serbs or the Chetniks, you never really have their faith brought up into it. But we know that their guns were being blessed by priests. You never get Christianity brought into it, but they were actually not only on the part of the nationalism, but also you see these people who are doing a modern day crusade. Now again, we don't blame Christianity. Just the same way you cannot go ahead and if some fringe element do something and the person has a name that's, that's connected to Islam, has nothing to do with Islam. So we don't blame Christianity, but it's just interesting that you never see their religion brought it, it, into it, but you can equate this to a modern day crusade that was happening because the, these were Christians and they were, as you can see, both of them working together and they let what's supposed to be a safe zone, a protection for them, they let the greatest genocide after World War II happen under their watch. You are now under the protection of the UN forces. Kad se sjetim tijel trenutka, meni u ušima mojim odzvone njegove riječi, ne bojte se, ostajem sa vama. But, but if this doesn't work, General, what do you think it will do to the people? Because they it, will, you it will work. It will work. You have here all the participants, all the people, some of the people that were found guilty, and the, uh, the main ones here, from the president and the main generals. Now, these people were Christian. That is undisputable, but we don't blame Christianity. I make this point because they were leading a modern day crusade, but you hardly ever, if ever, hear anyone bring, any normal person knows that this has nothing to do with Christianity, the true teachings of loving your neighbor. 
I mean, it just reminds me of a passage from the Bible, the Gospel of Matthew, where one came to Jesus and said, Oh, good master, what good thing, what, what good thing can I do that I may have inherit the kingdom? Meaning, how do I get to paradise? He said, Why are you calling me good? This is allegedly Jesus saying, why, why do you call me good? There's none good but God Almighty. So here we see he's dis differentiating himself from God. Then he said, what else? He said, then you got to keep the commandments. And then after listing a bunch of them, he said, to love your neighbor. So this is a great example for others who are Serbian, Christian, or whoever, to remember this and to remember those teachings, those true teachings that you have in your Bible of loving your neighbor. Because if you love your neighbor truly, you will not ever let something like this happen again. Not even thinking about it, let alone coming close to it. So these were Christians, but we don't blame Christianity. And it's a great lesson because you have much of the media that tries to use Muslims as scapegoats. Islam is a scapegoat. So anytime some lunatic does something, they try to put Islam on the witness stand, call Muslims terrorists, and spread this mass manipulation of feeding the people these lies, half-truths. And what this does is creates fear in people. And then you attack what you fear. And this is what we saw happen. More than uh, 20,000 people stayed outside in front of the base, behind the blue building. They were not able to enter in the base. There uh, on the main road, there was a checkpoint where uh, Bosnian Serb forces separate uh, men and boys. And first they, they sent them to the uh, house across the road. It's called White House where they tortured them and then uh, they deported them to the territory of Municipalities Warning where they shooting all of them. Now I want you to envision that. I mean, the United Nations are there to as peacekeepers and they're supposed to protect these innocent non-combatant civilians and that's why they were running here. You actually had uh, signs that we saw back over there uh, standing for United Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, because they did nothing. This is the uh, the head telling everybody that good news. the good news, you're all safe. What a liar. Okay, so what is this now? This is the Dutch soldiers celebrating in uh, Zagreb, Croatia, after they left from Srebrenica, after Srebrenica fell. Why are they yeah. celebrating? Well, I don't know. I, I, I mean, guess, this is... is I guess it? the job was done, I don't know. So while the Muslims are being massacred, these guys are celebrating? Yeah. That was just after they turned over the Muslims to these killers. Official delegation, including the Dutch Crown Prince, the Prime Minister and members of the Parliament had traveled to Zagreb. The Dutch Army Commander-in-Chief insisted on having a party. The evening in Zabra, the beer and the music contribute to the feelings of relief and joy among the soldiers who had survived their mission. However, survivors and many others saw it as a totally inappropriate time for a party. The commander is here. All these people who, this is one of the beautiful things now that our dean teaches that they might be able to get away with all of this evil in this life, but that's why there's a day of judgment and the ultimate reckoning will be there and these criminals will be held to account on the greatest court in front of the Creator on the day of recommence, the day of judgment. <laughs> We pray for all those innocent human beings, the victims, and their families who had to suffer this horrible, tragic ordeal. This is the uh, headquarters, the uh, command center for the for the UN Dutch, who were supposed to be protecting these civilians. You get to see live here 
some of the old equipment that they were using. This is the actual headquarters post for this area here, the room that they were using. Can't show you many of the pictures on the wall, just provocative pictures of na naked women, many disgusting things that the soldiers were writing on the walls. Now, but this is the state of the human being when he doesn't have taqwa, God consciousness. He will brings the human down to the lower than an animal. You can come in these rooms and you can go ahead and see some of the videos that they prepared. This is the graveyard and memorial. And these are all human beings. This is human life that has been taken. And there is a slogan here also that is said, never forget, never forget Srebrenica. Unlike the slogan that we hear often, when we hear never forget, we usually attribute it to 9-11. And what we say about that is anywhere where human life is taken, human life in America, human life in Afghanistan, in Bosnia, innocent human life taken is innocent human life. We condemn all acts of evil, of terrorism. But here we know exactly who those terrorists were who perpetuated this great, the greatest genocide after World War II where you had all these people here, they were killed unjustly. So I often say, never forget, yes, never forget that Islam and Muslims had nothing to do at all with 9-11. But here in Srebrenica, never forget that these crusaders who are actually Christian and their theology and ideology still stems and is alive. And you had the New Zealand terrorist who perpetuated that ideology. And you have many others, these Islamophobes, who are out there trying to revive this, who are trying to, who are actually going away from the true teachings of Jesus because we know this does not represent true Christianity, which is about loving your neighbor. So we need to work together as human beings who are on this earth together to make it a more peaceful and livable place for all because there is only one creator and he created us all and he is the one who will judge between us so it's not on us to take innocent human life that is sacred according to all religions especially the way of life from the creator Islam where it says killing innocent one innocent human being is as if you kill the world. And if these Dutch, these people, these UN forces would have been implementing God's divine law of saving one innocent life is as if you saved the world, they would have not have let this genocide happen. We're here in Srebrenica.